Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Sewer Study Committee meeting November 9th, um, 2017 at 6 p.m. here in the South Deerfield town offices. Um, I guess the first uh, thing on our agenda was to review uh, the minutes from the last meeting. Believe it or not, I hope you all saw them. I did. Okay. Yep. I have a motion. Move as printed. Excuse me? Move as printed. Seconded. Second. You're referring to the ones that were emailed? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Any further much. discussion? All those in favor? Yeah, I got one Aye. thing I'd like to bring up. Sure. Did you it's great that they put this on email, but I don't print out all the emails. What should happen is you should have a copy for every member that's here. Okay. I'll, I, will, I will do that. Have one. Kevin, me too. Kevin. Yep. I thought you got email. We were. I did, but like him, I didn't print it out. We were going to continue the discussion about the Headworks project, and Josh was going to have some information for us this evening to uh, see him. So, um, I see we have some visitors here. Um, I did get an email from you, Keith. Um, would you folks like to introduce yourselves? Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Holly, Superintendent of Water Facilities, Town of Greenfield. Don Willett, DPW Director in Greenfield. Bob McDonald, Superintendent, Montague Wastewater. Great. Um, what were you folks here to talk with us about? We had a, well, if you'd like, we'll go ahead and get started. You see what? Why don't you go around the table and introduce everybody? So All right, we can introduce leader. ourselves. We'll start with Jack. Uh, Jack Davey. Uh, Keith Mellon, Chief Operator, South Deerfield. Jeff Upton. Bruce St. Peters. Kip Kamosa. Bob Decker. John Pereski. John Pachurik. Okay. 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 Um, we want to talk to you about possibly going to a regional uh, digester, anaerobic digester. Uh, we had a, uh, well, to kind of give you the background on it, is we, um, when I first started as DPW director three years ago, we were spending about $175,000 a year disposing of our sludge. Uh, Greenfield has had several hits or misses. They've done a, a feasibility study. Uh, they had some money in there for a belt filter press. They've, uh, they had a digester many years ago and then they uh, went ahead and uh, let it lapse uh, or tore it down for a new building. That 175 has now grown up to $300,000 a year that we're spending in uh, sludge, uh, and it's not sustainable. Uh, we, we're going to Turner's Falls, and occasionally we still can take a load to Turner's Falls, but most of our sludge now is being delivered to Cranston, Rhode Island, uh, or to Blackstone. The, all the places that used to take sludge are no longer taking sludge. Uh, so our options are becoming more and more limited. Um, I'm not an operator, but what I can tell you is that if you go to an anaerobic digester, uh, your sludge gets reduced by about 95% or somewhere in that ballpark. So having done that, the first estimate that we got for Greenfield alone was a $9 million project. Um, when you take and you look at that and say, okay, well, if we did a $9 million project and we did it at 4%, we ran it out for 40 years, uh, the payment on that would be 475000 If we were to get an SRF loan at 0%, that number goes from 475 a year down to 225 a year. Again, I'm telling you that we're spending $300,000 a year on sludge disposal. If I can reduce that down, I could probably pay for the digester just on the savings. But for us to get the 0% or the 1% loan from SRF or from some other federal agency, from a political standpoint, it would make a lot more sense for us to turn around and talk about a regional solution. Uh, we know that Turner's Falls has issues. We know that Keith has issues. Uh, Sunderland was in there. Who else did we have? Uh, that was it. Pardon me? Who else? Was, was it just the four of us? Just the four of us, yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, we had a big meeting in Friendly's the other day, so I mean, uh, <laughs> and uh, they, I'm not sure they want us back because we sat there and drank coffee and talked sludge. But, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, which Friendly's it was. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, again, we're, we're here just to sort of run the idea up the flagpole. Uh, we are trying to talk regional. I have talked with uh, DEP. They think it's a great idea. Uh, Dan Kirkpatrick and I don't know. Kirkpaska. Kirkpaska. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we are uh, about, we talked with the Connecticut River Watershed. Uh, I know they're not association, but that organization. Uh, they would be in support of it. I don't think we'd ever get any money from them. Uh, and we're trying to get into the FERCOG to see if there's any way that they can help us. But if we come to a, at least a conclusion that the four towns that want to act together, uh, then at that point we can start trying to pull some political uh, efforts and see if we can get some kind of a grant. or. A, uh, one of the problems we have in Greenfield is I can't go after a uh, uh, DCR grant or a uh, urban housing or a housing grant uh, because we're over 10,000. Uh, anybody over 10,000 cannot uh, qualify for their grant programs. Uh, communities 10,000 under can get grants for water and sewer. Uh, we can't. So. Again, it's one of those things we're trying to figure out if there's a way that we can uh, pull something off to where, you know, maybe we can get half of it uh, paid for. The other thing that we're looking at is an economy of scale. If it costs me $9 million to build a digester for just Greenfield, but it costs me $13,000, uh, uh, $13 million to build a digester for all four communities, um, you know, maybe there's a, a good cost sharing and, uh, you know, a way to go. We know it's not sustainable for us in Greenfield, and I'm pretty certain it's not sustainable for the other three communities. So, again, we're just in here, we're, we're talking, we're trying to move it up the uh, flagpole as quickly as we can, because we'd like not to study it for another 10 years and do nothing. We'd like to go ahead and uh, start getting something done as quickly as possible. So. If I might. Um, so when I was in a, with the town of Medfield, I had a, a feasibility study on a uh, digester, a small one, because Medfield was a small treatment plant. And, you know, you, you take Greenfield and Montague and South Deerfield together, and you, it's, it's going to be a bigger digester. Um, one of the... One of the I'm working with UMass Amherst right now on a pilot test that we're doing uh, in Montague. And the professor that I'm working with, he came up with a thought. He goes, he goes, you realize that if you take an anaerobic uh, sludge and you put it into a digester, your retention time could possibly be half as much. So your your anaerobic digester would actually be uh, could potentially be a lot smaller. So we're going to meet with that professor next week from UMass. Um, we're also going to meet the gentleman who wrote up the uh, feasibility study uh, for me in uh, Medfield and he has a, a digester he has I think he has multiple digesters running that he actually owns and, and stuff so he's really a knowledgeable guy um, as far as Montague goes uh, our cost in sludge disposal is approximately 200 to 250,000 when we're uh, when we weren't running the uh, Montague uh, sludge process. Um, unfortunately, I took over the plant about a year ago, and uh, when I did, five people retired. Um, when those five people retired, trying to restart that Montague process has not been uh, the most successful uh, adventure. But I'm in the middle of a uh, one year long pilot test with the state. Um, we're trying to see what kind of success we can have with the Montague process. No matter what, whether it works or not, I still got to get rid of sludge. I'm still going to have <clears throat> up to $100,000 worth of, you know, sludge to get rid of. But that's why uh, I kind of got talking to Mark and I showed him the feasible study that I had done. And uh, so we started just kicking things around and uh, we got Don involved and that's how this thing has started to escalate from there. Mm -hmm. um, I've done a ton of research, Mark has too, into this whole thing. and. Uh, you know, I'm willing to share whatever information you guys want, so. Well, that sounds great. I know that it's an issue for us. Um, I'm not that knowledgeable in the whole t 
topic, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I hope that you guys pursue this, and I think that Deerfield would be quite interested in, in you know partnering partnering up with you guys about it. Um, okay. You know, it's I don't know what, you know we can do. Uh, I don't know if we come at it from four different directions. If it would be helpful, it would be better off for you guys to kind of follow through on this, and then when you come up with a better game plan or something, then we could meet again and you know see what's involved and go from there. Sound good to you? Or I'm I'm meeting with uh, the selectmen uh, on Monday, and I'm going to give a brief overview of what I'm thinking and everything like that. And they know everything that's going on. I've been very transparent about everything that we're doing in Montague and what, and you know, just like everybody else, we all have our budget woes. I had the paper mill closed on me. That was a 20% loss in revenue for me. Uh, the biosolids haven't been coming in. That's another 20% uh, loss in revenue. So, I mean, um, we're trying to be creative and we're trying to make it work. And, and like Don said, having a regional digester would be a great thing for a lot of people. Oh, yes, it would. <coughs> right now, Western Mass, all of the treatment plants in Western Mass have their sludge hauled far away at this point. And our costs have nearly tripled going to Cranston. And we've already run into an issue um, several times in the last <coughs> two weeks with um, them getting a call saying that Cranston was down, that they were on one pump, they had 15 trucks backed up, and that they would not be able to come and get the pickup for us. So that leaves my tank full, and I'm unable to waste, and that affects my whole treatment process. Yeah. So um, Mark called me about a week or so ago and asked, he told, he kind of, we talked about this current situation about sludge hauling and, and the problems that we're both encountering. And uh, then he brought up the subject briefly with me about that they were thinking about doing a digester and that if they did, would we be interested in bringing our sludge there? That was the intro. Um, and then from there, it became more of a cost sharing endeavor, perhaps. They're talking about adding cogeneration to the project and perhaps sharing in that cogeneration revenue as well. So we could work out a deal with maybe low cost to no cost sludge hauling in the future. And at the very least, if we ixnay all of it and say you're on your own, but gee thanks, mm -hmm. at least we would have a new local place to begin taking our sludge to. Between Montague and the digester, right. we'd probably be all set. So I really appreciate you yeah. guys taking the initiative because it's it's been really needed for a while now for someone to take the bull by the horns and make something happen one of the things that has slowed greenfield down has been uh the frta uh facility maintenance facility it's in front of our plant uh, they've been talking about moving finding another location that is owned by the town of uh, greenfield and the town of montague and that has always been kind of the site where they want to put uh, the digester. Um, they were looking at an anaerobic digester, but they were looking at it from a, a food, oil, and grease uh, digester to uh, get rid of all the food waste. And I don't know if that included uh, sewage uh, or not, but what we're looking at right now is strictly sewage. And so if that facility were to become available, that would be a location. But we're not limited to that. Uh, we want to stay out of the plant if we can, because it's all in the floodplain, or half of our uh, treatment plant is in the floodplain. However, we do have a landfill that's not that far away, and we think we could turn around and, and locate the digester there. And there's already a, what's called a leachate pipe that goes from the landfill to the uh, treatment plant. And it's a 10 inch pipe, I believe. I gotta double check that. But it's flowing about a one or two inches in depth. It's not very much at all. So for us to include that as a leachate uh, pipe for a digester, we could do that. So we're thinking we'll be able to use the landfill or the FRTA lot, one of those two things. And maybe we can still find a place to put it on our, on our site but if we did, we'd have to come up with some compensatory storage. So part of this is we're also looking right now at getting a tractor trailer uh, so we can haul our sludge and get out of the contracted doing that. And just that alone will save us a significant amount of money. 
Um, and that may be true with all of the, uh, well, I think, uh, with all the neighboring towns. We want to get away from that uh, 150, 200 uh, mile one way trip in order to get rid of our product. Uh, save all of that uh, fuel, save all of that smog, and keep it local. Uh, so from, from an energy standpoint, a cost standpoint, um, you know, it, it just makes sense. The technology for an anaerobic digester has been around for, I'm going to say, at least 30 years. I know I was involved with building one in Nashua, New Hampshire, and that was in the 1990s uh, or uh, 2000. I mean, it's been up for at least 17, 18 years. So again, it, it's not something that can't be done. And it's not something, I, I mean, we've done a feasibility study, but it was more for the FOG market than it was for sludge. Um, and had we moved on that five years ago when they did the study, that probably would have been a good, uh, a good product. Today, there are several people who are coming into the market or have come in the market, and I'm not sure that that would be a self-sustaining uh, activity for us. The sludge, uh, you know, un unless people change their ways, they're always going to be flushing a toilet. So we're always going to have sludge. I, I don't see that market going away or that uh, product going away. Um, and again, all the numbers and all the other stuff, we can work that out. And I think we can work it out to be equitable. But at some point in time, um, you're going to be hauling to Cranston, or you're, or you're going to be hauling to Cranston. And, and who knows, it may be, you know, upper state New York, or it may be uh, Poughkeepsie, mm -hmm. or uh, New Jersey. You know, I mean, at some point, uh, some of these trips may just become uh, really, really ridiculous. Uh, I, I actually would love to see a private vent, uh, vendor come out there and say, we're going to build something up in this corner of the uh, state. Mm -hmm. But just the permitting and all of the other things and not in my backyard routine, uh, that may take 10 to 15 years just to get permitted. Uh, the need we have right now is really pretty immediate. And if, if I have my druthers, we'd see something in four or five years. So. These guys permitted that digester over at the farm. Yeah. 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 One, one of the things that I was told today is Connecticut's changing up some of the legislature as to some of the requirements for their wastewater treatment plants down there. And the general information I got is that there's probably going to be four of them that are presently right now taking sludge that are not going to spend the money to upgrade. Yeah. So now you've got four more plants that are now closed down, which product has to go somewhere. And unfortunately, I think what's going to happen is supply and demand, um, I think we're gonna get squeezed harder and harder and harder as the costs go up and up because mm -hmm. they're gonna say, bring it to us, this is what's gonna cost because you got no place else to bring it. I got my contract on the wall this week and it went up 20%. So, yeah. so, so now costing me a little more fourteen hundred dollars a load. So let me see if I can understand what you're talking about. If you put it in up at the top of Wisdom Way there, uh, you're going to run the, the liquid down to your plant. You already have a line there that's only get running two inches yep. of the 10 inch line. Correct. And where do you anticipate getting rid of the solids after? Still have to, you still have to get rid of the solids. Can you bury uh, them on your landfill there or is that past it? No, nah, that's past. That's gone. You can compost. You can compost it. Yeah. Uh, and that may be the other step that we go to. And I believe you have a composting right. operation. Yeah. So. Alice, yeah. so do you have facility to compost it over? Yeah, in? we're all permitted and, and it's classified as a type one. And we could, you think there's a possibility of generating electricity from? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you, you have Lots. power lines right there uh, up on Wisdom Way, don't you? So, yes. High tension lines right there, so. Yeah. But a lot of times you can't contact to that type of electricity. Yeah. So is this that's a right. You do everything they want when they want. <laughs> Uh, it's a type. That's a type of digester. Yeah. yeah. Anaerobic digester has really been around like 50 years. I mean, like in general, just like in general. Just so I, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to. Yeah. Basically, it's just uh, microbes that live without oxygen that break it down and stabilize and oxidize what's in there and, and thus reduce it. So you end up with this oxidized black stable sludge, 
and a lot of clean water that is pH neutral. Is what but you this is with. basically just for sludge, not... Yeah, so it's heated up yeah. to like... Because Melnick's yeah. taking in Fat. food waste right. and... No, that's that's, that's a different point. point. That's not our interest. Yeah. We need a place to haul up take our sludge to. I mean, so, the, yeah. the design, the piece of the, the piece of those that I had done had some food waste going into it, but it was actually mixed in with other sludge to create a little more uh, octane. That's, pretty, that, that's what it is. Because if you take in some food sludge, like say uh, Pepsi waste, the, the, I was taking the Pepsi waste, really high BOD, mm -hmm. it uh, really generates a lot of energy and, and you can do that. So, you know, I'll, I'll leave it up to the engineers to design it, but it, it's you want to prepare yourself in case your, your uh, digester is not running all that healthy. You want to give it a boost, so that's why you just put in some smaller tanks to help create. Is any thought given to selling the service to other towns outside this regional, you know, so say Northampton take their sludge? This, there's a possibility of that. And, that. and again, we're trying to incorporate four or five towns right, right now. Uh, but the problem is the sizing of the digester. Mm -hmm. uh, if we 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 try to keep it to where we we know what the flow is coming in, there'll be a twenty percent growth on that. But if we try to go commercial, we try to get other uh, towns coming in, we may not have the capacity yeah. for that. So it can be too big. Too yeah. big. It, it's you know what I'm. It's uh, or it can be overloaded and go it could sour. Be overloaded. Yeah. yeah. And then it's not good to anybody. You have to maintain a perfect balance. Yeah. I mean, things. one of the thoughts we had was instead of building one tank, building two, making sure that we have some um, duplicity in the system. But again, trying to size it so that we've got the right, the right amount of uh, flow and the right amount of space for it. I'm not saying make them part of the, the regional right. group. I'm saying. Absolutely no question. If we end up in a situation where we, need, we have capacity, we need some additional uh, material, we could uh, turn around and open the doors up to you're somebody gonna, else. you're not going to build for that. Though. But we're not going to build for that, right. If you had your druthers, would you rather be on Deerfield Street or up on Wisdom Way? <laughs> Who are you asking me? <laughs> Where do you uh, <laughs> I, just want an, I just want an answer because, you know, the, the RTA uh, has been buying a piece of property in the town of Montague. Yep. It hasn't closed yet. And the last time I asked, we're still working on it, and we had to get the refunding because it didn't happen before the 1st of June. I, I would prefer to have it on Deerfield Street uh, simply because I have my operators and stuff right there. Again, the, it's not a real difficult thing to operate, but I'd rather not have another site that I have to send my guys to on a daily basis to take a look at it and say, yeah, there's no cracks in the egg, and then come back. Okay. Uh, because there is a transit authority meeting next week, uh, yep. Thursday at four o'clock. So we'll right. prod them. Okay. As to when that, when are, when are we going to close? Because I'm on that board too. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Selfishly for me, it means I can pipe it directly to the digester instead of have to still ship it to the other side of town. Right. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I admit that I'm selfish. Yeah. <laughs> well, the truth is, it's closer for you for yeah, Deerfield Street. Closer. It's closer for you for a Deerfield Street. Uh, so yeah. it's uh, and this comes in in, in a tanker truck, correct? Yes. And when the tanker's full, what seven thousand, ten thousand gallons? In? Depending, yeah. We generally run nine thousand. Oh, all right. Of the nine thousand, how much liquid leaves, and how much is the solids? It's usually about 4% solids for us. So it's very little. It's very little, yep. That's what I was trying to get into an incinerator. So if you, had, if you had the composting facility available and you had some decent size to it, you'd be, be all set for at least five years or so anyway. Yeah, yeah I mean, what you get out of an anaerobic digester is going to be uh, probably a heavier solid than 4%. Yeah. yeah. Out of the digester. Yeah, out of the digester. So that, that's the part you take out of that and you mix it with some of the organics to give it a good compost. But, you know, there's a formula to everything. No, but I'm just trying to say is that, you know, 95% of it goes down, the, down into the river eventually. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Oh, good. Um, 
I don't you explain know. what your process is, what you have over in Montague right now? You said you have your own digester, but you're having problems with it? Not a digester. What it was is that um, over since like 2008, they were developing a, um, uh, it's a, they call it the Montague process, but it, what they did is they took a, they made an anaerobic zone. So there are plants that run anaerobic zones and, and what they're trying to do is create a biology that uh, will basically eat itself up and still have an aerobic zone. So they, they uh, in 2015 and, and 2016, they were receiving five to 10 loads of sludge a day from surrounding communities and they were meeting, having no problems meeting their permits and they had created a really good zone of, for anaerobic. They had to shut down the process in May of 2016 and then shortly after they lost five employees to retirement to other things and so there are like three guys that were left that were part of it but you know they weren't the guys who originally designed it so for me to walk in I came from a conventional treatment plant for me to walk in off the street to try to say hey run it this way is impossible I mean ask Mark no one can come off the street and try to run that process it took a lot of development and uh, so my job is my job has been since I've been there and we started this pilot test is try to document everything try to show the state how they did it and how it worked and uh, we had some success in the last couple of months but not to the point where they were in 2015 or 2016 so basically what they did is they took a conventional treatment plant made it unconventional <clears throat> they got made an anaerobic zone and an anoxic zone by returning their returns to a different point of the plant. It's really complicated, but it, they uh, put a lot of time and effort and made a lot of uh, uh, mechanical changes to the plant. It can still be run as a conventional treatment plant, but um, I wouldn't <laughs> wish it upon anyone to try to start it from scratch. It is, it is a tough thing to try to do and make work on a consistent basis. Now, what's the difference between what you're explaining and what Greenfield's proposing? What Greenfield's proposing is an engineered anaerobic digester that have been engineered thousands of times throughout the country. Okay. So they're not going to take uh, their conventional treatment plant, make it an unconventional treatment plant. They're just going to take their sludge from their conventional treatment plant and go Put into an in anaerobic okay. digester. So it's like an addition, like putting an addition on your house or putting an addition on their treatment plan. Yeah. And, and it's kind of, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of like your septic tank in, at your house. The, the, all the fluid goes in and, you know, 95% of that is water, but there's this amount of solids. As it goes through your tank, the solids settle out and they go to the bottom. Then your leaching field ends up taking care of your liquids. So your liquids, and I believe uh, on the uh, digest of that, there's a decanting process. So as the, water, the stuff settles out, the leachate or the clean water then goes back into the leachate pipe, goes back to the treatment plant where it goes through the process. It gets chlorinated, dechlorinated, and shipped to the river. Uh, but where all the solids continue to uh, collect on the bottom, and then on the bottom, that's where the bacteria start to work. And if you had 100 pounds of solids, at the end of this process, you'll end up with five pounds of solids because the bugs or the bacteria will turn around and basically consume them. They will then generate gas, methane gas. And the methane gas is something we can extract to turn around and run a generator to turn around and produce electricity. I have a question. Yeah. Has anybody talked to Stan Rosenberg and company as to Not yet, a, because getting a pilot program and, and a grant? And the other question is, anybody else in the state done a regional facility like you're talking about? Not that, not that I'm aware of. Either. Nothing regional. No. Isn't Blackstone regional? Well, it's regional because it uh, takes care of multiple towns, towns like Springfield does. I don't know. Okay. But yeah, but, uh, yeah. No, we chose at this point not to push the politics in until we had the meeting with the towns, which was last Thursday. Uh, this meeting, uh, we're meeting in Montague to talk with a professor who wants to, to do this work. 
Uh, we want to turn around and talk to a couple engineering firms. Uh, we've also wanted to do a little bit of search for available grants, but the thought was maybe in December to turn around, I'll talk to Mayor McGlynn, uh, McGlynn, sorry. <laughs> he won't be uh, appreciative of that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, hope, hopefully he doesn't listen to this one. Uh, Mayor Billy. <laughs> yeah, Mayor, Mayor Billy, yeah, Mayor Martin. Uh, and um, I'm sorry, I worked for Mayor McGlynn for five and a half years, so. Uh, and you guys don't know who he is, but that's okay. Uh, but, you know, we wanted to try to get as much of the stuff together, get some of the studies together, start looking at it. And, you know, I've got a couple of feasibility studies. I have my own feasibility study uh, and, and then try to come up with a kind of a scope of what we're doing. Didn't want to just go to Stan Rosenberg and, uh, uh, you know, Lieutenant Governor Polito or, you know, Governor Baker and say, hey, we want money. We wanted to have at least some kind of a defined scope of what we're trying to accomplish. And again, if we've got four or five communities that are uh, piggybacking on that, that gives us a lot more. Uh, uh, but, but, but the whole thing here, your whole concept, yep. will save an awful lot of people all over the state. Yes. In, yeah. in this type of, of right. process. And yeah. what I'm trying to say is, you, you, is there's got to be others out there just like us. And, if we run, uh, if we run it as a pilot and it's successful, maybe another region can do the same type of thing. That's my point. Yeah. Yep. And, I, and that was like when I was in Medfield, that was my goal with Medway. I was yeah. trying to work that out there before I came here. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's out there. It's just whether or not you can get the commitment from people to. This, he gave us this feasibility study the other day at the meeting right. from Medfield that was done by an engineering firm. It is quite an interesting read. It's very detailed. Mm -hmm. uh, it shows best, worst, and uh, best case scenario, worst case scenario, and yeah. something else. There's and three Tom, categories. It was written by Tom Uranison, and um, yeah. he actually uh, designed and built a digester in Dartmouth uh, or a landfill. And as the landfill got less and less methane, you know, as they, you know, they catch up to the methane amount. He started bringing in food waste, and then he started bringing in sludge from the town of Dartmouth, and he was mixing it all together. And he had four huge diesel engines in a row. Uh, two of them would be running at all times, and he was generating so much electricity. I, I said, how come you're not driving a Mercedes? He goes, ah, no, I don't want it. <laughs> but he was just like generating so much power from that. Yeah. And it's possible, I mean, it, we run it right and we get to all the communities, but I think Don hit on a good point. What we're trying to do right now is get all our eggs in a row and, and try to, you know, see who's who the players are, who wants to be involved with this. Um, I'm going to go to my town on Monday and not so much pitch it, but just say this is what we're thinking, and uh, and, and hopefully it, it grabs some legs. You know, one other okay. asset that you could use is uh, go and see Linda Dunlevy from the Cog because they do have grants that are available and they get a grant for us when we turn around and merge three towns into one EMS service. Mm -hmm. And then they did a study for merging the police departments. That did not come through. Yeah. But this may be something that they could do because they have a certain amount of money that's allocated every year that they wait for something to come in and then they start studying or do a pre-study and then try and budget yeah. or try and get funding from the state to study this issue. I've, I've talked with Linda twice yeah. uh, in the last week, and they've got a uh, specialist on the board that they wanted me to talk to. Uh, I haven't been able to link up with that individual yet, but I'm hoping next week we'll be able to get that out of uh, another step down. I'm, I'm confident that we can get funding from the CEC because they have a program called or Organics to Energy. Uh, program that's where I got my funding to do the pilot test, test I'm doing right now. Um, I think it's going to be Greenfield and Dr. Park that uh, probably initiate that mm -hmm. um, since I already got one going after even more. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but there's also the USDA. USDA uh, does give out large grants for these type of things. Uh, the unfortunate part right now is the USDA is kind of a little bit in limbo with Mr. Trump uh, not deciding whether how much money he's going to give them yet. So, but uh, there's that type of funding. Mass DOE 
are also loves to uh, get involved with these projects because it is an energy project. So I mean, there are a lot of things, and Don knows them too. And uh, you know, I'm not going to preach it to him, but I mean, we're these are things that we're going to look into. And uh, I know some other plants have gotten some really nice funding for digesters. So it, it's out there. It's just how aggressive you get. That's all. Right. Hey, Don, good question. Uh, hypothetically, money is handed to you mm -hmm. right now. How long would it take? to put this together and have it operational? I would think the minimum is two years, but probably three to three and a half years. I don't want to say it all. Yeah. Personally, I'd hope for a lot shorter. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was thinking two years, too. Yeah. yeah. That, that's realistic. Yeah. OK, sure. Um, I think Jan Lee has been working on this. Have you touched base with her with the solid waste district? She's been involved with your smile. Jan, <laughs> yeah, Jan does the oh. bids for the truck. Did you mention it? I didn't hear you mention it. You're talking about her and others. We have not talked with her specifically about this issue. Yeah. I know she didn't work. Well, Jan, I know, um, and you guys can correct me, but Jan uh, puts the trucking for the, the sludge out the right. bid. Yeah. And, but, where it goes to the, uh, whatever facility it goes to, then the facilities do a contract with the uh, treatment plant. So, really, not not saying what the I'm only... I'm kind of administrator. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. I'm not a public Yeah, person. okay. Um, so, I mean, Jan, what Jan does is really Jan helpful. Jan negotiation. Yeah, she yeah. negotiates the trucking, but uh, we still have to pay a, a very steep price. Yeah. I'm for saying the, that she's been involved with the manner of the digester for this okay. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I, we're very interested, and yeah. so you know, please keep us posted. Yeah. I'm sure Keith will be in touch with you guys all along. Okay. And, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, anything that we can do to help, just let us know. We'll do. Uh, okay. I mean, I would expect you to see us probably January time frame to right. come back and say this is the scope. This is now we're going to start putting the political pressure on, and, and these are the grant applications that we're looking at. Okay. Is there something we can do to help you? To the process? No, I just wanted to make sure that you understood where we're at and <coughs> that uh, we're here to support Keith on this because he's part of the group. And uh, uh, again, we think this is a win-win-win for everybody. Okay. And totally. uh, uh, you know, it should have been done five years ago, six years ago. And uh, uh, I, you know, it's just when I saw the dollars go up to three hundred thousand, I knew this was time for us to get uh, get really active. Active Makes sense. Yes. I know Mark here shares my concerns about the sudden process control interruption when Cranston can't take our sludge. Yeah. We so, get very limited space to stockpile any of it. The so, unusual oh. thing, or not maybe unusual, but the thing about wastewater plant operators is they're control freaks. We don't like having something around us control our process. We like to be in control of it. And as of late, we're kind of out of control. Them not being able to take a load or an extra load affects our process. That's not a good place yeah, to be. No, not when permits are on the line. Yeah. So. Yeah, we, we also got hit with a surcharge this summer. Um, during the summer, our process uh, produces 3.5 to 3.8 percent uh, solids. And one of the facilities uh, charged us an additional fee if it was under 4 percent. Normally, eight or nine months out of the year, we have no trouble hitting four, four and a half percent. But uh, during the summer, we had to pay an additional fee. So again, it, it's it's not sustainable, and it's uh, you know the longer we delay, the more costly it's going to be for us. Okay. All right. I don't think you have to worry about Deerfield challenging you for a regional facility. So I'd say charge on. Charge on. All right. And sure. keep us informed. And I think we can okay. come to some fruition between yeah. all of us trying to work together. I think okay. that's a win-win situation. It would be crazy not to be interested. Sure. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you. Not a problem. Really appreciate it. Do you have any business cards you could leave here? Uh, oh, okay. I want to make sure I get the part of the minutes. It might, depending on the size. Uh, digestion. Kevin, could you give that paper to me? Sure. It puts out 10 times the solar blood. I mean, it's just phenomenal.
that's what Keith was talking about before trying to develop something like that. This is ideal. Got the potential for being ideal. This is basically what Keith was talking about like two years ago. I know. If you look at it, it's really not that big. No. But it's but it's Josh is sitting there. You got to get him up to the table. So I don't know if. Okay, He's been doing oh, his homework this, for this whole thing a month and a half. Talking about two years ago. Yeah. Trying yeah. to put together some type of regionalization and blah blah blah. Trying. We can improve the minutes while they're up there. Oh, we did. We did. We already did the minutes. Did we vote? We didn't vote. Yes. No, we didn't vote. Sure the we didn't vote. I did. Okay. All those in fine. favor of approving the minutes? The, yes. Aye. 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 Sorry, we did it again. Hmm? We did it again if we did it the first region. Mm -hmm. Because I would have had the abstain because I didn't have the same region. I wasn't even okay. here. Josh. Mm -hmm. Come on up. It was really sad. <laughs> they produced digital slides from the place that was working on the And they do your gold compost out of that person. So I guess we're going to talk about uh, some contracts. You buy them, you paint. You have some uh, gas back to contracts. Should we bring us up to get us some information as to? How to outline an RFP or whatever it is? Yeah, I sent uh, I sent you something last week. Did you take a look at that? Yes. Okay. So you know, it, it's kind of off of uh, you know, it, it's kind of taking what was proposed before and breaking it down a little bit more, just in order to um, shop it out, shop it out to some firms um, rather than just going with that initial firm, mm -hmm. uh, which who I, who I know those, but I just think it's probably in the best interest to kind of. Take that scope, modify a little bit, um, throw in the Captain Lathrop um, pump station as a priority within that, and then um, just depending on how you guys procure, um, it's an exempt service, um, so I think you can award to whoever you want. Um, you know, my experience is just bring a couple firms in, two or three firms, um, send them the scope, however, you know, modify it however you want, and have them come in and just do a PowerPoint presentation and talk to them and then pick the one you like, or have them develop a, a cost after or before the interview um, to scope it out and um, take it from there. So, you know, I, I think it, it's not, um, I don't know what you have done in the past for your engineering services, whether you've bid them out, whether you've just awarded them. I, um, Kevin could probably answer that. Yeah, just awarded them. Yeah, which is fine, and I think, you know, um, you, you can do that too, right? You, you had a pretty good um, submittal from Stantec. You know, I know those folks, they can do the work. Um, and, and, or pretty much that was working off of the scope that they had given you. I made a couple modifications, <coughs> a little more general in order to uh, just, you know, call a couple other firms to get them in um, and then have them give a presentation. You can have them do it all in one night and just have them come an hour apart or do it over a couple meetings. Um, you know that, that's how that's how we've done it. That's been my experience. Even if you don't, you're not required to bid it. Um, you want to make sure you see the team that you're going to be working with, or who's going to be doing the work for you. You want to make sure that you know the team that shows up here is the team that's doing the work. You kind of have to be um, pretty clear in that, so you know they don't bring in some all stars and then give you the scrubs. So um, you know so, some of that stuff is just standard practice um, in the industry. Yep. Um, and then really that the you know the, the scope uh, the scope that I put there I can hand it out if you guys does everybody have it doesn't have nope. it. Nope. Thank you, sir. Here yeah, I have a couple too. So, you know, really it's just the, uh, talking a little bit about um, the work that Weston and Sampson had already done. Um, talks a little bit about the committee. Um, and then uh, a little bit about some of the things we talked about before, which is, um, 
you know, uh, assessing what, what you have, um, prioritizing it in terms of how you need to do the work, um, so on and so on. Um, obviously, um, you know, Keith, the, the compliance, pretty important piece for you. So, you know, we, you wrote that into there so that when, when they're kind of assessing the overall infrastructure, they're also having an eye towards um, continued compliance with regulatory changes um, that are potentially coming. And then, you know, there's a couple different series, you know, you would get a draft report, you'd have some input, um, and then you get a, a, a final report out of that. They'd uh, take a look at the um, Captain Lathrop pump station independently. So, um, you know, just the, the, way I, the way I would envision it, which really doesn't mean anything, and you guys know that, but, um, is that you would, you would bring in the firms, you would kind of give them this scope or read through this scope and modify it, send it to, to firms, and I can give you names of firms to send it to, and say we'd like you to come in, um, prepare, prepare a uh, presentation on what your approach would be, um, and then have them come in, ask them some questions, prepare some questions. You know, the guys who do the work may have specific questions uh, relative to what they're doing to see what their approach is. Because I, all firms aren't, this isn't scoped out in such detail that um, it, it's prescribing what the approach would be. So I, I think you want to get some fresh, fresh eyes on how firms think they can do it. And, you know, that's all in the context of, you know, Deerfield's a small town and, you know, you have small plants and um, limited budget, whatever, whatever those, that framework is. Uh, you want to see what people's sensitivities are to the town and what their commitment would be, right? So, you know, it seems like you, you had a little turnover with Weston and Sampson. They did a fine job, but then they lost a couple people, and then the response wasn't so great. Um, so, you know, one, one of the things I always kind of um, make a point is whoever comes in front of you or the people who, do, who are going to be doing the work or you're not going to be doing the work. So you, you kind of have to state some of those things just right up front. Um, Looks like a great roadmap. I, you know, I, I think that's the, the, the important thing is to just have a roadmap, right? So you, you don't want to make decisions without knowing all the cards, right? So you, you can um, you probably have to spend a little money to figure that out, but then you're not going to misspend money down the road. And you guys know things change over time, so you, you do the best you can. And, you know, my, my experience has been, you know, you don't have to do an exhaustive study of every last little thing you can apply some um, you can apply some uh, measure of assumptions once you get a sense of what the pipe looks like in town you don't have to look at every every inch of pipe in town you can look in sections of town that are representative so you, you probably need to do a little bit of pipe inspection and assessment you, you definitely want to assess all your pump stations and your treatment plants um, because that's probably where the bigger money is um, and, and then you, you kind of you look at um, you, you look at kind of doing a real brief model. I don't want to scare people with model, but you know it's such a small amount of infrastructure. You look at what are the consequences of failure are and what the risk of failure is for all that stuff in terms of how many customers does it serve if it fails? Is it an environmental disaster? Is it a regulatory disaster? And you factor all that stuff in and it, it's not overly complicated. And then you kind of get a roadmap of where you should be spending your money first and what's most important to the town. The only thing I didn't really see on here, unless I overlooked it, is uh, maybe some kind of a reference check. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, so I, yes. Calling I, around to other you, customers that have had jobs. Yeah, done absolutely. Them. You bring them in. Uh, yeah. good, good point. Yeah. You know, second job here. So, uh, <laughs> yes, I would say, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you, you bring a couple firms in, you hear what they have to say, and it, if you like one of those firms, ask them for references, yeah. you know. I, I'm pretty sure I'll know everybody on it. Everybody who's coming here, I'll be able to get references for you. I would check them yourselves or, or have the town check them. Um, uh, <laughs> but, Go ahead. But I, you know, there, there's, I don't want to be a voting member because I know too many people in the industry. Although I didn't know those three down there, which was refreshing. No, they're different towns. Yeah, yeah no, I know. Uh, oh, okay. Hey, just so everybody's aware, um, like very specifically to um, item number seven where we talked about Captain Lathrop. Um, I've already started the ball rolling. I could not wait any longer. Um, I'm already looking at wintertime. So what I did was I already contracted with uh, 
Dave Prickett. What he's going to be doing is originally when these guys came up and they looked at our system, they said, the guy from AMP said, okay, well, I'm going to be able to go ahead and replace these horsepower for horsepower. So then uh, one of the questions I had, and I kind of ran a few things past Josh, was, is, okay, well, if that's the case, as soon as they put the cutter on the bottom, does that mean that three horse is still a three horse? Does that three horse now become a five horse? Does it become a seven horse? AMP couldn't tell me that. All he's saying is, we're just going to do it from horsepower to horsepower. And then the other gentleman from Suez, who is very, very good at what he does, and says, these things work very, very well. That's fantastic. So we know we've got a decent product. We know we've got a really super good price. Because you really can't, because Dave looked at these prices, he goes, you can't get any bare, more bare bones than this. A few things that he was concerned about was because it being so bare boned was, uh, excuse me, let me back up. So then the last question I had was, was, is this thing actually rated for what it was, what it is, what it should be? And the reason why I say that is because it's a contractor to put it in. A contractor puts in a lift station, they're putting in the cheapest thing they could possibly put in. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. They don't, they don't look for the future. All they see is, this is what it's going to take to get me by, and I can make my money, and I can walk away, mm -hmm. which is exactly what happens. Right. Don't try and sugarcoat anything. So the bottom line is, is, is this thing is proper? What is the flow? Is this working properly? What is the heads? Is the head working out properly? Are these pump sizes correct? Again, going back to you put the cutter on a three horse, does it have to become a larger, larger horsepower? So Dave should be giving me answers on those by the end of next week. So, and like I said, I have to apologize, but I, just, I can't wait any longer. I mean, I have major issues at that plant or that lift station. It's costing us huge money. If we can go ahead and do this other, I think that's fantastic. But again, there's a few concerns that Dave brought up that I agree with him <clears throat> is it's just basically ripping out some of the electronics, putting in some new electronics, some new variable drives, and dropping a couple of pumps down on the existing rail system. The thing that concerns me is, what does the bottom of the rail system look like? I've never seen it, to be honest with you. So the bottom of these rails, if they go ahead and get this thing all ripped apart, and all of a sudden they go, oh man, you know what, uh, this stuff's all rotted. Now we're gonna have to pull this apart. Oh man, you know what, this stuff really doesn't line up very well right now. So timing is kind of an issue for us because when we take that down, we have to plug the pipe that goes to the tank, the lift station, and then we have to put in a pump and run a hose to North Main Street. And my question is, is how many days or how many weeks is that going to happen? That's why I like to see everything done ahead of time. Get us up, make sure that we're going in the right direction instead of just saying, hey, let's go ahead and do this. It's cheap. You know, we think it's going to work. Well, I don't want to spend 30 grand and say, it didn't work. Well, I, I, so, I tend not to agree with some of that, Kevin, because yeah, well, I mean, we always I've been a contractor business. for a long time, and there's several other contractors, and all contractors don't always put the cheapest thing in to get by, because if it goes wrong, we're the guys that are going to hear about it. Right. So, and, and, and I have no idea of the quality of this stuff that right. you know, this guy was putting in. And neither do we. Uh, but, you know, I would assume that you could pump down that chamber enough with the same pump that you would pump the pipe out so you could see what's down in there, no? No. So you have no way of... The only, way, the only way to be able to do it is to completely put, suck it down as much as we can with our pump, Yep. and then go ahead and have Greg's or somebody come in with a vector truck and finish sucking it out dry. Okay, and then but, once that happens, yep. then, then you could once, see once if it was we can see what's there. going on, Sure. but also be advised that once that happens, I'm going to have challenges getting these things reprimed because we have had this in the past, challenges. And just so you're aware, just so I can make my point, yeah. is there's two catch basins on either side of the road, yep. and we couldn't figure out why there's a little dip in the middle of the road. Yep. So finally we dug it up. Yep. The contractor, the same one, decided that the two pieces of pipe that he had weren't long enough, so we took a street sign and kind of wrapped it around the two and threw a grain bag over the top. And I've got photo to prove it. So, common practice. Um, well, I, I would think that it would be 
I think it would be a good idea to see what's at the bottom so you know. Oh, I agree. I mean, even if it, it, it exactly. is a pain in the neck, have Greg's come if that's what you're going right. to use, pump it down, see what it's got. If everything seems solid, um, you know, I don't know, were these new pumps going to be that difficult to prime? Uh, uh, the priming of the pumps, I'm not that much worried about. What I'm more worried about is that they're using the existing railing system because that's what how they sure. slide up and down in there. Yep. My question is, is once it actually gets down in there, where it's actually where the bottom of the rails are mounted, mm -hmm. are these pumps going to be exactly the same? Are they going to be within a thirty second of each other in thickness, in size? Because all you're doing is you're taking a pump and you're sliding it down over a hole and they just kind of come together. There's no bolts, there's no nothing else. It's just a tight fit. So if you've got something that's too tight, the pump's not gonna go all the way down. If you've got something that's too loose, now all of a sudden, the pump is not gonna run efficiently because it's only gonna be pumping arbitrarily maybe half, and the other half is gonna be blowing out the edges and recirculating back into the tank. Well, let me ask you, because I don't know, does it, I thought this pump was submerged. It is submerged. So it doesn't so, it so what take it does, the liquids it, it, from all around it, it, it? It sucks from the bottom. Sure. And then it goes out the side. Yeah. So this comes sliding down the yep. rails, and then it goes into a hole, and they line up perfectly. Okay. So your fingers are the discharge into the... Correct. Okay. The discharge end of it is okay. what I'm concerned about, because if it's not perfect, it's not going to work. It won't be perfect. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, never so, but again, going back to the, the real concern I have was, is, and I asked the question, pump size for pump size, you know, horsepower for horsepower, that's all fine and well, but if I put this on, do I need to increase? And he's like, uh, I don't know. So. So what did Dave have to say? That's what I'm waiting on. I said he's going to give us an answer back by the mid to end of next week because he's looking at the flows, he's looking at all the different information that's in there to make sure that if we're gonna go ahead and do something, we're gonna do it properly. So what I asked him to do is go ahead and give me bare bones, is this gonna work? A little bit upgrade to maybe fixing some of the railing where it attaches or something like that. And if hypothetically, if you were to try and do it a complete rebuild, what would be the ballpark price? Not looking for complete engineering, just looking for pricing, that way we can bring it forward. You're talking the rail system? No, no, well, everything. I'm talking, will what he says, these guys, right now, the existing twenty-six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 project, will this work as is? Now, going to the next step, adding in, what would it be if you changed out some of the railing? What would it be if you changed out some of the valves? Another basic price quote. Then going into the third option, of a complete rebuild because I mean I mean my general understanding is that there's not a whole lot of places where the pumps are actually wet well pumps historically there and correct me if I'm wrong I don't know if they're different down there but what I'm being told is is the majority of them the, the pumps themselves are never really actually in the water hmm. nowadays no yeah. but yeah but that, I mean that's like a small can station right. so is it just is there a dry pit or just no. a Strictly. I mean, I don't know if people wouldn't build them like that now, right. but, you know, it's, I mean, we have plenty of those too, okay. right, and, and you just, we maintain them and they're paying, um, so, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know how many people that serves, or, 30, yeah, so it doesn't serve a ton of people, no, mm -hmm. but it's become very expensive for us because of the materials they've been flushing down, you know, the blockage, the whole nine yards, losing pumps, over time, holidays, weekends, nights, having to go in there and try and pull the pump, get the thing cleaned back out again. Um, this last time, uh, both pumps kicked out, and uh, we flooded somebody's basement, and it cost us about $5,200 to clean their basement. So there's another five grand that we just blew out the window. And again, it was one of the one of the it was a twofold reason. One of the pumps actually shut down because the pump itself was bad or went bad because of all the material that's wrapped around. And the second one, which is pump one, which is the one we're having the most problem with, um, the, and I'm gonna probably mess this up, it, for a poor choice of words, it's most like the, the reset relay would not allow it to be able to reset. So I pushed a button for the reset, it would not pull contact. So that ended up having to be replaced. Um, historically, 
when we go there, it pump is supposed to turn on. It, we shut off at 28 inches. It turns on at 33 inches. High water is considered 35 inches. I had 95 inches in it that Sunday night when I went in there, or excuse me, Saturday night when I went in there. So it was within about seven or eight inches of going out the overflow and then going into the brook. So, and again, that would turn into a... He has a question. Yes, sir. So, um, so you'll get this information about... Hopefully within a week. Correct. Um, how long will it take to get pumps? How soon will you get it done? Yeah, but my general understanding from, from talking with AMP, he made it sound like those pumps were readily available. So in other words, if, if the original thought process is, is a good one mm -hmm. and there's going to be no other additional issues we need to deal with, um, we should be able to knock the thing out, having all the materials here probably within a week. Is the way okay. it it sound. That's what I'm trying to do. That's, that's why I reached out to these guys um, because I just, I just couldn't wait any longer. Kevin, was the, gen the, gen the outfit that was there that day, was it from Amp Electric? Yeah, one of the guys was from Amp. Yeah. Okay, so, so he's an electrician. Yeah. Period. I Knows nothing, anything about anything else. He's a very good electrician, but that's all he is, an electrician. And then the guy from uh, Suez is extremely good at what he does as far as being able to maintain the pumps the whole nine yards. Um, and then when I asked him the same question about with the pumps, with the motor horsepower have to be raised because of the, the cutter. And he just kind of, well, I, I don't know. So then I started looking at the pump curve and the pump curve seemed to be kind of low at that horsepower. But didn't he, if, didn't he also say to us there, that's what they use and they have no issues with them? Yeah, but what is, what is, is their tank exactly like our tank? Is their flow just like our flows? That's well, their tanks were a little I bigger mean, if, and if, they had if, more if, flow. If you want me to go ahead and spend 26 or 28 grand and have it go south, I'd be more than happy to. I'm trying to make sure that we're going to spend money, we're going to spend smart money, not stupid money, is what and, I'm trying to do. Okay. Um, Kevin had called me and asked, sent me the spec, the cut sheets and everything. And I, I just don't do that stuff, and I know the gentleman who we talked to at Suez really well, who was an expert at maintaining pump stations. Sure. He's not the guy who sizes the right motor sure. for the pump, so it's a, it's pretty important, which is what I said, is that the equipment can work great, but if it's not being, if it's not on the right motor, right. it's mm -hmm. not going to work. And right. so you don't want to put something in that's too big because it won't work, and you don't want to put something in that's too small. I can't remember work. the gentleman's name, but there was a. a there was a sales rep from the manufacturer. I don't know, um, Franklin Miller, maybe. I think they. I think they were the. They were the people that were going to size the thing. Back when it was built. No, no, well, now. The, yeah, I, I don't. Know. And I, I, he, but he I don't know why. Well, I don't that, know. that would see now. That it was not my understanding when when he came up. The guy from Amp, Michael, yep. he said, "I will be replacing pump size for pump size." And then he asked, do you want the additional cutter on the bottom? I says, well, what is the advantage of the cutter on the bottom? And he said, basically, so you'll be able to take a beach ball and blow it through there and not get it plugged. And I said, perfect. Sure. Sure. And then that's when I asked, adding the cutter to it, will that, what's that do to the horsepower? And he couldn't tell me. <laughs> what's the existing horsepower proposed? I'm sorry? What is the proposed horsepower? Uh, he's coming up with, with, I believe it's a five horse. Five? It's Sounds pretty robust. All right. Yeah. But but the question is is yeah. is it right? You know, because like I said, I, I hate spending stupid money. I want to make sure we're making an informed decision and spending our money properly. Right. I don't want to be penny wise and dollar foolish, but the other side of the coin is I don't want to go ahead and, and just waste money and say, well, yeah, that didn't work, so let's try something else. Right. And then you go ahead and go back to originally what I'm trying to do now bring somebody in, look at the system, make sure this is proper, and if it is, then we can move forward. I think that's probably a pretty prudent thing to do. Sounds like to me. I will say this though, with any kind of pump that has a macerator on it, um, you're gonna get a certain amount of performance out of that for any given size macerator, they're kind of mated. Mm -hmm. so, Really what's important, I think, is to figure out the exact size you would need for the loading for that containment tank over at Cabin Lathrop. You said 30 homes. 
who knows how many of those homes are actually putting out the stuff. Might all belong to one, two, or three of them. Right. And the rest aren't. Who knows? But yeah, what's um, the I there too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but again, if you oversize it, now you're not only hurting the motor, really. Right. right. You're, yeah, you're but you're using electricity that otherwise isn't needed. Exercise. Yeah. Size yeah. The motor and the pump. Yeah. yeah. Properly, and it, it's worth doing. You might actually save money doing that. Yeah, no, that's what happens. You, you, yeah. you, if it's wrong, if the motor and the pump and the macerator aren't properly matched, then you're not opt you're not operating in the sweet spot. So you're using more energy and you're wearing yeah. the thing out. Um, no, I something agree. bigger isn't always better. Okay? Right. Having something really oversized doesn't necessarily no. work. You know that if you're working in a tree. Yeah, I would actually say that's probably a bigger danger is oversizing it. Right. Because I imagine from 30 houses, it's not going to be as much as you think for a macerator to handle that, especially today's technologies for that, who knows right. though? I mean, well, because this is also, it's going to be a, it's a, it's a, a VR, gotta, um, where basically it's going to be starting out as a single phase and going to a three phase. Ah, okay. Um, you know, and the, that's the, better too. The general understanding is, is oh, that way you can, your, your pump cycles will actually, the actual pumping time will be longer instead of the start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, yeah. start, stop. Um, you know, which we may be able to go ahead and do and by, by looking at what we have, our elevations, what our flows are, can we increase our time? Instead of going from, from 28 inches to 33 inches, can I go ahead and add another five inches before um, we need yeah. to start pumping? Yeah. Again, this is, this is something that's just been put in. It's the way it's always worked. Um, Maybe even have 20 It's the way it's always been. So the question I ask is, is, is it proper? Yeah. We'll get that answer. I'm hoping to get that answer by the end of next week. On the bigger stuff, the, um, that, that's, kind of, that's you know, one issue. Then the other issue is all these studies, mm -hmm. right? And, and getting in three companies to figure this stuff out. So we're, we're kind of starting now to kind of get an idea of studying the whole system, right? Uh, I was just wondering. So for the last year, we've just been looking at this kind of stuff and poking around with the different ideas. You guys have been getting a lot of information, a lot of different ways to go. And now you've settled on getting in three different companies, right? To give us a full overview of everything. I'm just trying to get my hands around where we're at. Probably um, more, more get, you, you kind of give them a scope of work, what you want done in town. Yeah. And then you have them come in and say, how would you approach this for our town? Gotcha. And you hear what the three firms have to say. And you pick the one you like. And what's the time frame of, of that typical process? Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know how quickly you guys do stuff, so I, I can't tell you. Like, you know, you got to give a firm probably, especially now that it's the holiday yep. season. Um, you know, this isn't huge stuff, so right. but you, you got to give a firm like a month. Oh, to, of course, yeah. To, to pull their team together, and then how quickly you guys meet and put them in front of you. And, my thought was to get not be eating up everything with last last statement. My thought was to have something and a plan developed that we could bring for our, our folks at uh, town meeting, so we can have a, a roadmap what we want to do, what our you know what the scope of work is, what are an estimated an estimated cost, and then start presenting to the town so that people can kind of get aware of what that. I assume that's all your goal too, but I'm just trying to get around it. I haven't been involved. So I mean, I I think. Uh... What's reasonable in my mind with the with the holidays coming up, you could probably have selected a firm and have a price without having done any work yet. Of course. Um, you know, three months is reasonable. That's what I think. I don't know what we'll do that same thing. Well, we we are. Oh, go ahead. I'm gonna try to get your attention. Maybe. No, you got my attention. Uh, I think what we got to do is take this scope of services as outlined here. I think our board should recommend uh, to the Board of Selectmen to go ahead and enter and advertise for the or solicit these quotes and let's get going and what have you. Well, if you if you recall, we we did get one quote from Santec, yeah. and uh, you know after, you know talking with Josh, he thought that there was a lot of areas of it that were kind of vague, and we wanted to know you know more specific things. And, uh, you know, it's going to take somebody, um, you know, some time to look at, we'll use Santex 
proposal and you know see if it meets these things and if it doesn't then to tweak it and go back to them as well as some other people uh, you had given me a list of I think three or four engineering right. firms some time yeah. ago and yeah. Santec was the only one that got back to me yeah I think that's good I, and listen I have no problem with Santec I, I do, yeah no I mean I do millions of dollars worth sure work with Santec and yep. have I know the people there for 15 years so. sure um, they're a good firm and, and they give you a good proposal so I, I'm not saying anything other than that right. but when I read that proposal you know it, you could tailor it a little more to what I've heard here sure um, and then just for your own good if you want to you want to plow ahead with Santec it's not a bad decision if you just want to get rolling with it you can give this to them and say come in do a presentation for us and um, and put a price or you don't have to do it at the presentation but then say, give us a price to what you're presenting, or you can just do it right then, or, you know, different places procure differently. So I, I don't, you know, I just don't know how you guys do business. Um, and, and they'll be able to do the work for you. I, I sure. promise you that. Yeah. Shouldn't the scope of services indicate that we want the price from them? That's up to you guys, right? So I, I didn't put that in there, and so what, what, uh, then what would you recommend? Well, so this is what I would say. So this is pretty general right here, right? It, it basically says, we want this. We, we want these things to be done, but it doesn't say exactly how they're going to do it, right? So right. if you gave this to three firms, three firms would take a different approach. Somebody might do a low-ball, cheap, cheap, cheap approach because they think you got no money, and you know, you get what you pay for. So, you know, I think um, if you brought a firm in for an interview, right, and the firms are asking you questions about what you're looking for and asking you, you know, what do you see as the end here? What, what, what goals do you have? That's a good firm because they're sensitive to what your needs are. If they're coming in and just giving you the lowest price and this is what, this is what we would do, this would be the cheapest, that may not be the best thing for you guys. Um, and if they come in and they're selling you a Cadillac, you probably don't want that either. Right, so there, there's a there's a happy medium in there somewhere where you know they understand they're questioning what your needs are specific to these things. Um, so it, it, this isn't spelled out. So to me, it's um, it's probably two step process. Have a firm or firms come in. I don't even think you have to advertise it. You you can email this to people and say, hey, do you have interest in, in coming in and putting a presentation on what your approach to this would be. Um, and then after that interview, you can say, we like this firm, we want you to put a price to it. And I, I can help you kind of um, come up with a sheet that you'll be able to determine if you're getting a fair rate um, just by breaking it down into tasks. Um, and, and if it looks like the rates are good and you're happy with what they said to you and how they responded to you and you think you got a decent group in front of you, sign them up and get going with it. Would you would you be able to attend the meetings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, yes. Yeah, as long as I know in advance and uh, you know I, things don't get in the way for my own work. But yeah, I, I have no problem. I have no problem um, having a dialogue. What I think, I just don't want to be a voting member because um, I, I have conflicts all over the world right. with uh, mm -hmm. my position and, and what I do. So, are, are, is this a request for proposals? That well, we it's talked like about a, we, uh, meetings ago. We talked about yeah. This is an informal request for proposals, right? You, you so, could you could officially put an RFP on the top of it, request for proposals, okay. and mail it out and do it. I don't think you have to, depending on what what your administration says in town. You could just do it informally and. So, so you send out a request for proposals, and engineering firms respond. They don't charge us anything no, for, yeah, for no. making like a, a presentation. That's correct. You, they don't charge anything. And then they They're job applicants. Their job applicants. They're job applicants. And then if and, and then if we 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 choose three that that we like, and they and 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 then we have a, a price quote from them. You know, that, that's one way of doing it that um, the downside of officially, this is my opinion, small scale kind of like this, the downside of advertising it um, is you're going to get a ton of people. Mm -hmm. It's going to make it, it's going to make the process longer. So you're going to get, you're going to get a lot of smaller firms, a lot of individual people who think they know what they're doing in May. And out of state um, people too. You know, so you, you're going it, to, it'll just make the process longer. If you, if you kind of do it. 
the way that like we do it in Springfield where you know the numbers are bigger and um, you're looking for bigger firms you're gonna get a lot of you might get nine ten twelve firms chasing this and then you're gonna have unless you're careful you're gonna be obligated to like interview all of those people or review the proposals and, and toss them out I think you go so you can advertise it globally or you can choose in advance yeah because it's exempt five firms or ten firms yeah I think you call like I, I think I give you three or four firms that have local or nearby offices that just do it with a project with a, a, a small project just send it to firms yeah yeah so you can do that there are exempt engineering is an exempt service so you know and one of the one of the things why I don't want to be a voting member because if you send it to the three firms or four firms I don't even know what I sent you like I will know people maybe not the people who are doing the work but I'll know their yeah. bosses, is the guess. And then, you know, we'll ha you have a little more influence because I'll, I'll, I'll twist their arms when they need twisting just because of the relationships I have. So, um, and, and that's not patting myself on the back. So I, I, I think that you send it to those firms, you guys make the decision on who you think you like and who can do it, and I'll give you my opinion of that. And, um, and then you're off and running. If you don't, if, if you're interested in just getting started, I can tell you, Stantec can do the work. I have a relationship with them. I, I think my, my concern with the Stantec thing initially was that like I didn't, I didn't disclose that I know who they are and what they are. And so, you know, I, I think uh, if you wanted to go with them, you're fine, go with them. They're a good firm. I'll be able to, from afar, have some influence on making sure they respond to what you're doing. Um, it's more, it's just more from how, in, in, where, where I work, you want to have that appearance that you're shopping things around just because we do so much work. For you guys, it just might be, you send it out to three people and, and, and you call three people and you only got one call back, that's pretty good. You got a good firm who called you back, I can tell you that. And, and so, if you want to get going, you, you let me know. I'll send this out and I'll copy you guys on it and uh, you'll get them up here before the holidays for an interview. And then if you think they can do it for you uh, and, and you like what you see, then you're off and running and you can get a price proposal. I, I don't know what the rest of you guys, but I, I, I like that. I, I like that because it takes a little burden off of us. Um, and you, know, you know the people, not that it's gonna do anything, but you're just gonna mail it out and we'll start getting some immediate response instead of dragging this thing out. For us to do it. To multiple firms or just to stand back? I think three. Three. All right. Three. I'm going to have you do that, though. Okay. I'll give you the I'll resend, okay. I'll find the email I sent you before. Okay. You send it to those three. I will do that. I'll give you the names of the people to call. Okay. And, and uh, you set it up. And don't mention my name nope. in it until they get here. Does right. I need a motion? Why don't we just do it? Why don't we just do it? Yeah. Huh? Well, we're not going to do it. Wendy's going to well, send, right. send it I mean, out as, as, a, as a the board of select committee. Will send it out. Made the we're going to recommend that the sort that's of what be done. Commissioners make the decision. I don't know. Does the board of selectmen have to do it? Do I be the commissioner? Yeah. Yeah. They're the sewer commissioner. Yeah. They're the yeah. procuring yeah. authority. It'd be yeah, our recommendation we're, to the board. We're just doing a request. We're going to recommend to the select board. Yeah. The only right. thing I would ask is that you guys read this before you send it out. Yeah. I have some Yeah, like, you know, you guys, guys who do things, unlike all you guys. Um, they, they may want to tweak this a little bit to, to address some of their issues, right? So, and, and I'll take another read at it too because, you know, it's been a few weeks and, you know, I did this between different things. So I'm just trying to speed it up by, yeah, yeah, by so, passing a select boy. That's my only, and then I we understand. can get them in when the presentation's yeah. but that's it my won't, We're going to meet next Wednesday so we can get it going. I mean, it, it won't take us much time. Board of select. The board of select. Yeah. yeah. Sewer commissioners. So why don't you get comments back to whoever you get them back to. Somebody send them to me and I'll talk to you if you want. And then, um, you know, you get it out. I, I still think just because the holidays, uh, sure. I think it's, yeah, I, I just don't think it's going to happen. And you, and you never know. Some of, some of these firms may, um, you know, they, they may want a little Christmas present themselves. So maybe they'll chase it down quicker than I think. But. I think the firms I gave you were, um, they all have local offices, but they're bigger firms. Mm -hmm. well, I think it's a positive step going forward. Yeah. Let's get going. Yep. yep. I agree. Good. All right. So what we're going to do, do is- Do you want a motion on that? We're going to send this to the selectmen. That's, oh. 
right? Yeah, I, we already we already have it. But Two of them. Thank you. Here. And then what? I, and then the selectmen get back to us. No, the selectmen send it out. We send it out. You send it out. We'll then get three firms and then uh, three schedule a date. Right? Yeah, he'll get it to me. Okay. And I'll get to Wendy. And Actually, I, I probably still have it anyways, but if you can do it, I'll, I'll look. Just um, copy Wendy and everybody yeah. on, on board. All right, I don't know anybody's it's names, and I don't know who's on what. Oh, there ain't one is whose feet I'm stepping it's on. Town administrator. He gets so, copied. Yeah, if you, if you send it to me, Josh, that's fine, because I'll just forward it right to Wendy. And, um, but if Wendy, you could just put that on our agenda for next Wednesday, and so we can, we can deal with that. Well, all right. Uh, put this uh, together and see if at least motion made. Jack made it. I second. second it. It. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So uh, I have one question, Josh. Go ahead. You listened to most of the presentation those gentlemen made in Greenfield. Yeah, I missed the introductions, but yeah. Well, one was a superintendent Montague. One was the DPW head in Greenfield, and the treatment plan operator was the other gentleman. Yep. And do uh, you have any qualms with, in doing that? Or, or I mean, I, I guess we looked at it. You got you just missed a window for some grants that just closed, I think, last month. We, we, we looked at it um, a couple years back, and then uh, we just looked at it again. And it doesn't make uh, sense for us. but. You know, in, in this area, I mean, sludge disposal is a nightmare in the future. It's getting harder. We're actually, I, I'm going to actually try to build an incinerator uh, for liquid and, and uh, sludge cake. So, uh, you take our stuff? Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That was what it was working into. Right there. Yeah, yeah, but you know, that, that, that's a whole different thing. So, uh, you know, there, there is a need to the point where we're, we're addressing it to, um, you know, we send ours up to New Hampshire, right? But you, you guys are sending liquid. Yeah, right. we, mm -hmm. we we dewater ours and we have sludge cake, yeah. but it, it's still still you gotta get rid of it. It's still <laughs> right. it's still big money, and there's not a lot of. Um, and I think we talked. I talked to somebody about this. Maybe it was you, or you, or I, I'm not sure. I talked to somebody about sludge disposal, and if we would take your liquid, and I tried to, to mm -hmm. swing it, and we just it's a loser for us. Right. So we're. Um, you know, we're we're going to look at in the next few years here if there's an opportunity to actually actually to build a regional sludge incinerator. Um, That's what I've been talking. And, about. and, and you know, with tipping fees, um, so it can pay for itself. So, there you go. What kind of a place would you need to burn it? Something like the Mount Tom Coal Station? Uh, you know, you need a stack, and you need a, We have a permitted stack for some other stuff that we have. So um, it just depends. It depends how much. You know, we're a big plant. Um, so, you know, the permitting is, is the big issue. But no, you don't need a facility like Mount Tom. Be too big. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need anything like that. Um, so, and then, and then there's another facility down right next to us, a uh, trash burning facility. Um, right that, across the way. Should, they should manager. be burning sludge and they're not. They're just not using their heads. Um, they should be in the sludge burn business because there's a market for it, clearly. Right? To, uh, market to the point where we're looking at actually trying to build one. Um, so there's a pretty big demand for getting rid of your sludge. So you know, di I think small scale digesters, it's not a bad, it's not a bad idea. You need to think about digesters, right? When that guy was talking about, he changed his process at the treatment plant. That's in an open tank. A digester is like a vessel. So you fill yeah. it up, you process it. I was going to point that out too. Yeah, yeah. So a digester is like a tank. If you look at like. If you if you Google Deer Island digesters, that's what a modern digester. Is. There is. They just built one right here in town. So. Uh, at Melnick's farm. Yeah, yeah, over at uh, over by Barwood. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So and there and there's waste to energy stuff and hauling sludge is a bad thing all around. It costs yeah. a lot of money and pounds of roasted worry about your carbon footprint. And, yeah. You know, we haul ours every day. We have we have loads going up to New Hampshire and it's expensive. I think so, the wave of the future really is sludge digestion and composting on a massive scale, and it's full circle. I mean, you're taking local stuff and making it help the lo local soil too for farmers. Yeah, like you know, my, my own, my, the only thing I would say, and I have no expertise in this, so you're going to create, you know, you said what happens to the solids, they said they can compost it, right? Well, you, Maybe. you get a pretty big pile of compost eventually and you got to put it somewhere. And in Massachusetts, you can't, it's not like a product you can sell. At least ours, I know we can't. And, and I 
think we're at class one slug. And you, still, you still can't sell it, so you got a lot of compost. You need a place to put it. And so that's the only thing I don't have, you know, eventually. Maybe the law needs to be changed. I know other well, states. Well, I mean, I, I think that is part of it, too. But, yeah. you know, that's a, that's a big lift. Yeah. No, but I mean, other states do sell it and yes. yeah, yeah. very successful. Kevin uh, Scarborough and I and uh, Doug Finn had teleconferences with McGill, who did Nutrigreen for Hampton Road Sanitation District in Virginia okay. on a mass scale. And I was aware of it because I worked for them at the time. So that was my idea to try to maybe get them up here to do a regional compost facility. It would be all indoors and scrubbed air and the whole nine yards. But they, after much talk with us and doing their own research for the area, determined that we would not be able to provide them with an adequate feedstock for the scale they wanted to, to operate on, <laughs> industrial oh, scale, and that they were EPA class A grade certified stuff. Oh, so they gave up on us essentially, which was, which well, is really it, there's a There's a bigger market for it in the South, right? So Big time. Fact, they do it in DC. Big I time. actually know Ted Hampton who, Hampton who Rose Hampton Hampton Rose. Rose. Yeah. I know him pretty well, so I'm bored with him. So, um, there's a bigger market down south, where you see it down there. It's less of a market from a regulatory perspective up here because they've regu regulated that opportunity away. So, Too bad. So you just got to be thinking, yeah. you know, but I, I think there is, um, there's money, there's grant money for, um, for digesters. The food waste digester stuff is a big, big thing too, right? They came knocking our doors. I mean, I've had people offer to build them for us. Yeah. They just wanted to site them uh, on our facility. And, you know, we have odor issues, which is the other thing you just need to be aware of. Like, yeah, with earlier technology, digesters have got to be dangerous, especially in the Midwest. They had a lot of explosions where the top blew off and went, you know, hundreds of yards away and where people got killed. Um, but now, the way they're building with the new technology and safeguards, uh, far surpass anything they used to do in the past. So more and more digesters are coming back into favor, and the regulatory agencies are more apt to grant than okay for people to there's do that. Big, uh, and I don't want to drag this on, but it, yeah. there, there's an argument to be made for digesters. But if you can demonstrate you're hauling your sludge, and you know, the big thing with DEP is like that environmental footprint, and if you're, you're spending fossil fuel to haul it, and then you're burying it in a landfill, and da 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 da, and if, if you can't find a way to keep it local, um, you, you can make, there, there's some good arguments uh, why they should permit permitted, and that's when you need your reps involved, is like, why don't you move forward? I know Donald from Greenfield tonight that was here said that the preliminary discussions they've had with both the DEP reps for this area were very favorable, yeah. that they were looking to fast track that, possibly fast track it. So that's why I wanted you guys to be aware of it too tonight, you know, because they were trying to be, get the ball rolling as soon as possible. Because again, this Cranston, Rhode Island thing really isn't sustainable for anybody. And, and you're looking at a three year build. Expensive. Pardon me? And you're looking at a three year build. Oh, yeah. I mean, that makes me really nervous that we have to go another three years of like this, mm -hmm. the status quo. It's, it's not pretty. How long does it take you to build? Three years was the right. Yeah. I think you'd be lucky to get it done in three years. Yeah. That's with everything just right. happening. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got to design it. It's not like it's an off the shelf. Right, design. exactly. So, yeah. Especially with co generation. Procure, you got to procure that stuff, you have to actually procure through. Yeah, and the co generation part, too. Yeah, no, um, I'm, I'm aware. Like, and I know I, myself, when I added solar to my house, I was told, boy, it's a good thing you live in national grid territory because Eversource takes forever to, to okay these things. Mm. And when mine was finished, National Grid came out within two days and signed off on everything, inspected it, and I was good to go. I think Melnick's still waiting. Eversource takes forever. I don't no, know why. He wasn't, they weren't flaring methane this afternoon. So, oh, he wasn't? Yeah. So maybe, maybe he didn't finally. Like maybe there was another telephone call. I, I don't know. But he definitely, they definitely weren't flaring. Huh? Well, that's good. Hmm. Well, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, um, thanks. This is a yeah. huge key. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. All right, what else we got? And there is an area in here they talk about budgeting and what the funding options are, what the estimates and what the impact is going to be on the budget, how that's going to affect the sewer rates, the whole thing area. So that's all actually tied into this at the yeah, same you, time. Yeah, you so need to know all that stuff. Yep. You, you know, so there's a little component. Like, I, I, I don't, smaller scale, so I have no idea 
what you're going to get back for pricing um, for all of these things. Because on a larger scale, all of those components are pretty detailed and they cost a lot. I just think, you know, I, I couldn't tell you the number. But get, sure. get some firms in, hear mm -hmm. what they have to say, and then I would say send them away and, and have them. Uh, i got to give it some thought. I would say send them away and then have them come back. You might want to refine your scope after that and then send it to them and have them price it out. I gotta give that a little thought, so give me a couple days. And, uh, but I would take, I would definitely read it and mark it up. I, I don't care if you, if you have it, mark it up. Um, I think Kevin and, and Kip have my email. Yep. Um, so send it to me. I'm tied up Monday and Tuesday, um, but I'll be back at it on Wednesday. So, and you said you have a meeting on Wednesday? You need it? Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. So, well, we can. So if you if you get it marked up, I hate to say this, get it marked up to me by by the end of tomorrow. If you guys can do that, and then I'll work on it over weekend. But I, over the weekend, but I'm in uh, Boston for some mediation stuff uh, on Monday and Tuesday. So um, I'll have to do it Sunday. Or something. We, we ought to have tomorrow. one person on the committee. So. If, we're, if we're all going to submit suggestions, we probably should have one person on the committee gather those together and mm -hmm. send it to Josh instead of him trying to do we have any volunteers? Make sense? I'm I'm really I I can't I don't want to commit to that. I'm just I sorry suggested but No, <laughs> no, I know, but I I just know that I, I, I just don't have time. Oh I think that the uh sorry. I'm taking so I'm just that was I was just proposing that somebody on the committee should take any suggestions on Josh's Scope of work. Scope, Scope of services work. there. And then I, the appoint person to get them to Josh. Send them to Wendy. All right, so send them to Wendy. Okay. I think that, so, I think that, so you can consult you can you can consolidate them. I think that Josh has got a good outline, efforts, but there's Josh. a there's a lot in this uh, original Stantec report that's uh, you know, what they're submitting, what they would do that is not in there. So I think that needs to be the Stantec original uh, submission needs to be read and see how much of that we really want incorporated into this scope of services. Or you, you send out that scope of services and see what everybody comes back with because Stantec will come back with what they already submitted to you plus, and plus what Right, what because I think there's a lot of detail in what they had submitted mm -hmm. that we really need information along with this. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is a good outline and a good starter, but this one uh, incorporates a lot of other stuff. Works for me. All right, okay. can I go home? Good. Yes, thank you so much. I have to raise my hand. Hey, you're yeah. part of this committee. You can't I'm leave. I'm not voting member. <laughs> he's re yeah. I, I gather he's refused to be sworn in. I have. I'm not, I'm not going to be. Yeah. I'll help out all you need, but I'm not going to be a voting member. Yeah. That's okay. I, we appreciate your help. Anyways. Yeah, okay. thanks, thanks a lot, Josh. Thanks. All right, thank appreciate it. Josh. Thank, thank you, Josh. Thank, thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you. Josh. See you later. Josh. Have a nice Thanksgiving. Thank you. We're not going to be back before that. No. Come on, go to Jake, Kirby. No, I have right. one other. Can we, sure. on the minutes, can we, when they're submitted, can we put in the minutes who prepared them? Oh, it's me. That's how poor they are. Pardon? I, I did that. No, but I'm just, I, I think we should. I think we need to do that on all the minutes, whether it's you, whether it's me. Typically, okay. it's signed. Huh? Typically, minutes are signed by the preparer. Per. All right. Yeah, but Mike, but they I, should. Be. I think they should be on the minutes. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Right. They should well, be signed by the preparer. Uh, actually, I think somebody other than Kip should do the minutes because he's he's doing. Yeah. He's got. He's wearing so many hats. He he probably doesn't sleep. I did uh, ask if we could provide administrative help for the minutes, and I said, what, nine men? No one can take minutes. But I'm here tonight to take minutes. What I do want to know what you're doing to help you along. But um, I, if you can find someone on your committee to take minutes. It is, it is quite a bit. It's hard to participate and write down. And as I was writing down, I've got one ear to him, and then I start writing something. What was I writing? You know, and it's, I, I would do it, but I already do the minutes for the capital yeah. improvement right. committee. committee. Right. So you're a professional. Uh, yeah, but 
And, and what I do is I just use my phone and I record it and then I listen to it. Oh. And I. Did you get what I sent out? Which unfortunately, I, you know, that means you have to attend the meeting twice. I sent out to all the boards and committees that outline. Did you all get that? I sent it out to everybody. What? Uh, minutes forms. They're pre pre made. You oh. just fill it in. No. Because I didn't get that. a lot of committees. I just got what was supposed to be in them. What? I just got the, you sent an email that had what was supposed to be in the minutes. Right, and I, but I didn't, there was no attachment? I don't know. Okay, the attachment had templates for minutes. Oh. Just fill it in. Who was there, who wasn't there. Mm -hmm. you know, when did you send it? You said what? Uh, two hours ago, three hours, oh. two hours oh. ago. No, I didn't. Oh, sorry, I'm not going to I don't get to my computer. <laughs> Two hours ago? I don't find it here. But I was I still on the roof two hours ago. I don't have it. In the dark? In the dark. Okay. Don't, don't, don't have it? Don't I'll check. Hey. I'll check again. I'll send it out. Just because different committees are asking for help. Yeah. It's a little stopgap measure. So is someone stepping forward to take minutes? John Administrator. No. Unfortunately, everybody here is already on it. Other at least two other committees. That's the problem. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. all, you know, we're but already you committed minutes? out. <laughs> all right. Unfortunately. Um, what did I write down? Wendy, that email did not come through. What do you mean, the attachment wasn't on in the email? Or? I didn't get an email. I got a couple emails from it today, but I didn't look. Right. I, I don't think. So we're Maybe it's in my junk book. I sent it to a bunch of committees, so most of you should have gotten four. <laughs> I know. Paul had something at the DDIC meeting this morning about minutes, no, I but sent he it got it tonight. from okay, Barbara. I'll check again. I'll do it again. But anyway. Okay. And I can make them. The people There's, can just take them, put them in people's boxes. You know. How about Thursday the uh, 14th or the 21st for our next meeting? You're buying the refreshments? Of December, I think. Dewatered or not? Probably should be the 14th, Kip, because don't you meet the third Thursday with skims? Yeah, um, yeah but they, I don't believe that there's anything pressing. really pressing, so if I need so to. So it could be either yeah, one. Yeah, it could be either one. Well, two, 14th works. Typically, typically. It's hard sometimes if we're doing it on the same night because I can't come to either one. You know, I got to pick one. Right. That's what I said, too. But. Typically, I don't get invited, but isn't there something in Old Earth that usually on Thursday before Christmas yeah. week or so? Yeah. That would be a 21st. No, that would be just so the third Thursday, right, days. usually? My, my oh. guess is yeah. that's when that one will be. I have no idea. This is the second yeah. Thursday. So, yeah, the 14th would be the second. The 21st would be probably the safer to do it. The 21st. But that's, but that's, the, that's, that's the scum's meeting. The second one. Why well, you do it the seventh? Fire department stuff. Right. Kevin, can you do the 14th? That's the second Thursday? Or second Thursday prior? is my production committee. Yeah. It's actually coming. like tonight is, but I told like, because these three gentlemen are coming yeah. tonight, they don't need to be here. So. Uh, 7th or 21st? I don't I think know. That'd be my guess. Right before Christmas. Make any difference. Let us know. What's your agenda for that meeting? Just go over what, what comes from whatever we got today. Hmm. Do you want it? Just send it. Who's for the 21st? Me? We'll update it. We'll That's fine it. with me. Bruce? 1221? Yep. Either one. Okay. 1221. 6 p.m. Yep. Okay. Sounds like you're playing Space Invaders over there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't put it down, I'll forget it. <laughs> they hear the aliens get yeah, the way, the explosions. Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Careful, you're dating yourself. <laughs> yeah, I know what I did. Mean. Stop and think. <laughs> no, I remember Pac-Man well. That was a fun game. <laughs> Anything else for tonight? No, I don't believe so. Does anybody else have anything else they wanted to bring up or talk about? No. Okay. no. Move your direction. Dick Tracy. <laughs>
Let me second. Are you? Right, we both made it at the same time. Okay. Oh, All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. All right. Thank you. Jack, does the 11th look like we're going to?